The United States is the cruising capital of the world. Most cruise lines are headquartered here. More than 60% of cruisers live here, and most cruises leave from here. Yet, somehow Bolivia, a small landlocked country, has more registered cruise ships than America, which only has a single one. See, cruise ships, just like companies, have to be registered in a country. The vessel is then subject to all safety, labor, and environmental laws of that state. So it comes at no surprise that most cruise ships register in countries with low minimum wages and low taxation. The Bahamas, the country with the most registered cruise ships for instance, has no income tax and a minimum wage of $5 an hour. Because these regulations are pretty convenient, the business practice of registering countries abroad is called flying a flag of convenience. But there's one prominent exception to this practice, the pride of America, the world's only American cruise ship. It's pretty unique, but also much more trouble than it might at first appear. And it's starting to really struggle to stay afloat. So let's get into it and explore the fascinating and complex world of the world's only American cruise ship. But first, we have to go back in time, the year 1997 to be specific. The state of Hawaii is in economic turmoil. In the last five years, it has lost 30,000 jobs and the unemployment rate has doubled. Tourism revenues have stagnated and it's starting to get worse. But there is an industry Hawaii can still tap into for new jobs and revenues, cruising. At this point, there's not a single cruise ship sailing the Hawaiian islands. There's one problem, however, the Passenger Vessel Services Act of 1886. See, this law forbids foreign flag passenger vessels from sailing between American ports without stopping in a foreign nation. And this means that cruise ships cannot sail in Hawaii without stopping over in Kiribati or Mexico, which add around 4 to 6 days to the journey. That's of course unless the ship is American. But to be an American cruise ship, the vessel has to be American built, American crewed, and American based. And that's expensive. But in light of the economic downturn of Hawaii in 1997, Hawaii's senator desperately needed change. And with a bit of fighting, he managed to get the Senate to approve Project America, a program offering over a billion dollars in federal loans and other incentives to build and grow a US flagged passenger ship industry. And it worked! In 2000, three American built cruise ships were ordered, including the Pride of America and the Pride of Hawaii. But then 9 11 happened. The cruising industry suffered large losses, and five American cruise lines, including the one that ordered the three ships, went bankrupt. Thankfully, though, Norwegian cruise lines stepped in. They bought the two vessels that were under construction at the time and completed them. Against all odds, the Pride of America and the Pride of Hawaii were all ready to take on the Hawaiian cruising market under the flag of the United States. And passengers were ready to get out their wallets and start booking those cruises. Of course, back then they didn't have the smart wallets we have today. Like Extra, a premium smart wallet with a quick card access mechanism, RFID blocking technology, and optional solar powered tracking ability. It's slim, it's durable, it's premium, and it's safe. I've been using them for over a month now, and I've never looked back since. If you're interested, go to shop.extra.com slash cruisedaily, or use code cruisedaily to get 25% off. I can only recommend them, now back to the video. Even though passengers were ready to get out their wallets and book those cruises, there was just one small problem. No one wanted to work there. See, to sail the American flag, the vessel needs to have an American crew. That means American captains, waiters, and housekeeping staff. But the market for that just didn't exist. Cruise lines never recruited crew members in America before. They usually went to the Philippines, Brazil, China, or India for cheaper and more experienced labor. Sailing with an inexperienced American crew, the first few months of sailings were a disaster. Firstly, the American passengers hated the American crew. The Hawaiian cruises were plagued by poor service, an enormous number of customer complaints about crew members' attitude, and employees literally quitting on the spot. In the first year alone, almost half the American crew members just walked off the ship and quit. This is unheard of anywhere else in the cruising industry. As a result, Norwegian had to increase wages to incentivize crew members to stay and launch a full training program in the US to better prepare American crew members for life aboard a cruise ship. And this seemed to work. Passenger satisfaction improved and crew members stopped quitting. But problems for Norwegian didn't stop there. See, if you fly the American flag, the rules on board are the American law. And that includes American labor laws, which compared to the Bahamas are pretty strict. 
there is this little thing in America called overtime pay. If you work more than 40 hours a week or on public holidays, for every extra hour you're entitled a 50% higher hourly wage. And cruise ships are notorious for having long working days, an average of 70 to 80 hours a week. Usually on cruise ships, if you work more than 70 hours, you get overtime pay. On the only American cruise ship, however, if you work more than 40 hours, you're supposed to get overtime pay. For nearly 8 years, Norwegian didn't follow that rule, until it was sued and forced to pay over $500,000 in back pay to 2,000 employees. Now that's a good payday. The Pride of America isn't just special for crew members, however. It's also a pretty unique experience for passengers. Firstly, the ship is American. And oh boy, the second you step on board, they will let you know that this is the world's only American cruise ship. It's an American extravaganza, from the Great Seal in the atrium, to an Oval Office replica, an underwhelming Washington monument, George Washington himself, and other minor details throughout the ship. There is no doubt it's an American, alright? But some things are missing. For instance, there is no casino on board, because casinos are restricted in America. There is also no duty-free shopping, because the ship never reaches international waters. It's in America the whole time. This also means you pay American federal and Hawaiian state taxes every time you buy a drink. But probably the largest and most noticeable difference to other cruises is the cruise fare. While a one-week cruise on a newer Norwegian cruise ship starts at $529, a one-week cruise on the Pride of America at the same exact time will set you back at least $1700, more than triple the price. Of course, this is partially due to the higher labor and taxation costs in America. But there's another reason. The ship is currently capped at 50% passenger capacity, and that's because of a massive staffing shortage. Out of a planned 920 crew members, the ship currently only has 550. This comes as America has reached historically low unemployment rates, and unfilled job openings exceed 10 million, causing a labor crisis. And with an increase in cruising demand, and a lower supply of Hawaiian cruises, the price, of course, keeps going up. But going to Hawaii doesn't have to be this expensive. If you're interested, check out the second part of this video series on Mild Travels, our brand new second channel, where I try to visit Hawaii with only a hundred dollars. Thank you so much for watching, if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, and as always, keep cruising. Limited edition travel penguin hoodies are out now on cruiselocally.com.